Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike, and today we're going to discuss all three energy systems that we've already talked about, we've already defined, but I want to talk about the pi that they share. So if we think about a pi chart, there's this total area, which we might say is 100%, and we can think about each of the three energy systems supplying a proportion of this total 100% of energy. Um, and now this, this changes based on the activity that you're doing. But what I want to make very, very clear here, I'm just going <laughs> to start with the lead here. Um, all three of these systems are working at the same time all the time. So I, I simplify the explanation of the aerobic system so that you can kind of pick up that it's slower than the other ones. It doesn't create energy at the same rate, um, but it's kind of starting right away. It's going right away. Even in, you know, a 10 second triple on the deadlift, even in one of those long grueling triples on the deadlift, it's starting and it's helping and it's working. Now we talk about weightlifting as an alactic anaerobic activity, but that is not, you know, that it, that itself is not an accurate description. It is a tri energy system. I've never really used that term, but it's a three energy system activity. The difference becomes in this pi. It's this proportion. Somebody's here. It's this proportion of everything that is working. So in something like a 100 meter sprint, that phosphagen system, that alactic anaerobic system might be using or might be giving us about half of your energy. And then maybe a quarter of it comes from the lactic anaerobic system. And then maybe another quarter of it comes from the aerobic energy system. Um, but again, we're sharing the pie. Now, if I'm doing a marathon, maybe at the beginning of the marathon, maybe about uh, a quarter, if I'm going slow enough, maybe a quarter of the energy comes from my a lactic anaerobic system, maybe a quarter of it comes from the lactic anaerobic system, and then maybe half of it comes from the aerobic system. But on, you know, hour two of a marathon, that proportion changes a little bit. And what we see is as activities last for longer, the slice of the pie that the aerobic energy system takes is bigger and bigger and bigger. So this system, the oxygen system, the aerobic system, is the one that fights off that fatigue. It's the one that creates energy for long, long periods of time. It's got all these steps. Nothing really gasses out. Nothing really gets backed up in these uh, biochemical pathways. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm sure if you go for long enough, something will happen, uh, especially if you impair blood flow. Uh, and, you know, per, perhaps like electrolyte balance and a, a limitation in your cardiac output in your heart. We will talk about cardiac output more later. Um, just kind of tease in if you know some terms. Um, but that's that's the whole idea. Now, those other systems, they haven't shut off. I'm still trying to use that a lactic anaerobic system. It's still, you know, putting that phosphate back on the ADP to make ATP. It's still doing that. It's just not able to, you know, it doesn't have a built up store of everything. So it's not able to do that, you know, in perpetuity. Uh, it just slows down. It can't can't do like a really, really fast kind of thing. But the upside is that, you know, now the aerobic energy system has had time to get going and it's you know it's a well-oiled machine and you know we talked about this a, a little bit in a couple videos ago but that lactic anaerobic system most of that system is actually part of the aerobic system that glycolysis pathway is the first step of your aerobic pathway so if I, you know, I might at some point I go through all my glycolysis and I take my pyruvate, my end product, and I continue on down the aerobic system. But, you know, sometimes it might get a little backed up and there might be another enzyme, maybe called lactate dehydrogenase that says, hey, buddy, I can help you. And it turns one of those pyruvate into a lactate and then it takes that over to the liver and then it stores that for later and it metabolizes that in the liver. 
these processes all occur at the same time. It's not a switch of on and off. It is a dial of more and less. And that's the major point that I want to get across here.